Well, what you saw there was happy images of normal life, but the realities for a certain amount of time were pretty grim. What you can see here is the number of new patients reported daily in China. It all started early in January and they did impose a lockdown. And as you can see in this graph shown here, you can see that all important bell curve that they were speaking about, which spikes somewhere here. And they also reported their highest number of cases, uh, their highest number of deaths rather, in March as well. But come today, Wuhan has reported zero deaths. China itself has only very few cases. What does this tell us? This tells us that there is light at the end of the tunnel if we adhere to the regulations and also the orders given by the government and the health authorities. China is a shining example. Of course, this is what takes the cake when it comes to the news items we're presenting to you today. But also, we will also be looking at some news from here at home. Over here in Sri Lanka, as you know, a curfew will be lifted in a number of, a curfew was relaxed rather, in a number of areas and will once again be put into effect, was once again put into effect until the 14th of April. In addition, a decision was also taken to close down the economic centers around the country. What were the reasons behind this and what are the solutions to help people get their essential needs? Also, the National Elections Commission has made a statement on the politicization of the relief efforts. We'll find out more on what they had to say as well. This is News First. We're going to bring you the very latest first, fast and direct. Total number of COVID-19 cases in Sri Lanka rises. Curfew imposed on six districts, including Colombo, to be in effect until further notice. Curfew to be relaxed for the other 19 districts tomorrow and on the 14th of April. Operations of the Dambulda Economic Centre suspended. Tambuttegam Economic Centre remains open. Chairman of the National Elections Commission says the process of distributing relief during the COVID-19 outbreak should be depoliticized. Now, the President's media division issued a statement today requesting citizens to conduct all New Year traditions with the participation of only family members. The statement reminds the public that measures, including the prolonged curfew, are being implemented solely for the welfare and safety of the public. The curfew which was imposed on the districts of Colombo, Gampaha, Kalutara, Putlam, Kandy and Jaffna, which have been identified as high-risk zones in terms of the spread of COVID-19, will be in effect until further notice. Curfew will be relaxed for the other 19 districts tomorrow at 6 a.m. and will be reimposed at 4 p.m. tomorrow. The curfew will then be in effect island-wide until 6 a.m. on the 14th of April. The President's Media Division said, Curfew, which will be lifted on the 14th of April, will be reimposed at 4 p.m. on the same day. The government has requested the general public to bear the inconveniences which have occurred as a result of curfew with understanding and to act responsibly. The CEO of the National Medicines Regulatory Authority explained the decision to keep pharmacies open during curfew periods. Uh, the main decision was to, uh, they have decided to open the pharmacies throughout the country, all the pharmacies from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. from tomorrow. That means Thursday, 9th Thursday. I appeal, I earnestly request from you not to be panic, don't try to collect drugs uh, for two to three months, which is very, very, very ineffective method. Because when you keep uh, drugs for, for a long time, the efficacy of that drug will be day by day uh, deteriorating. That means you won't get the expected effect from that drug. Because of that, I uh, advise you not to purchase for more than one month. When, uh, when they open the pharmacies daily from 9 to 5 p.m., you can easily purchase without uh, going in long queues. You can go to the pharmacies at your leisure. You can appoint one of the volunteers in your area with the help of your ground seven Eldari. He can be given a 
curb if fast because police have also agreed to give at that time uh, then he can collect the prescription from uh, his neighbors and go to the pharmacy and collect uh, the drugs for 10 to 15 people at the same time this will reduce uh, people gathering uh, around pharmacies now in a letter six chair professors of medicine in sri lanka have provided recommendations to curb the spread of COVID-19 and contain the impact it has on the economy and the country as a whole. The letter signed by six chair professors of medicine on the 5th of April has been directed to the commander of the Sri Lanka Army, Lieutenant General Shavindra Silva, who is also the head of the National Operations Centre for Prevention of COVID-19 Outbreak, and the Director General of Health Services, Dr. Anil Jasinger. Professor Janaka De Silva from the Kalinir University Professor Sarat Lekhamwasam from the University of Ruhuna, Professor S.A.M. Kularatna from the University of Peradeniya, Professor Sisira Siribaddana from the Rajarata University, Professor Saroj Jayasinghe from the University of Colombo and Professor Kamani Wanigasuriya from the University of Sri Jayawadhanapura have signed the letter. Whilst commending the efforts made by the government in curbing the spread of the virus, the professors say our security forces and the health authorities have been very successful in contact tracing and isolation of contacts, as well as in quarantining of returnees from foreign countries. However, the professors say that Sri Lanka will have to come out of the lockdown in the near future as a result of the impact that it is having on people and industries. The letter reads, quote, Many people with other illnesses have experienced difficulties in accessing treatment and medication. Nearly 10% of our population is 65 years of age or older and suffer from ailments that require regular medication. Unquote. The letter adds that despite the best efforts of the government, many people have found it difficult to obtain their medicines during the lockdown. In terms of economic productivity, the professors say the cost to the apparel industry alone is estimated at 2 billion rupees, whilst the tourism industry is at a standstill and daily wage earners have no means of supporting their families. On the matter of lifting the lockdown, the letter reads, quote, The basis on which this decision is made should be very carefully considered based on scientific evidence and could be informed by the strategies followed by other Asian countries such as China, South Korea, Vietnam and Singapore that have been successful in containing transmission. The professors recommend that the curfew can be relaxed in stages district-wise if the level of transmission is not high based on the daily number of new cases. They note, however, that areas with high numbers of patients could be cordoned off and kept under stricter control measures or lockdowns. They suggest that supermarkets, hospitals, markets, more petrol stations and pharmacies could remain open for a period of time and that each household can be given a pass for one person to leave the house in order to obtain essential items. Further, the medical professors stated that a requirement can be imposed for everyone to wear a face mask and practice social distancing in public. The letter notes that measures such as increasing testing capacity while seeking advice from virologists and continuing public health measures including contact tracing, providing medical staffers with personal protective equipment and purchasing medical supplies to cope with a possible surge in cases can also be implemented. They also recommend the enforcement of a strong system for surveillance and reporting from around the country if the incidence goes above a certain level. The professors say that authorities can consider further easing restrictions if the number of new cases does not increase over a period of time. They say, quote, the airport could be open for inbound passengers initially only from countries with low transmission rates and particularly for Sri Lankan citizens who wish to return home, adding that this should be done in a tightly controlled fashion, including the continued imposition of mandatory 14-day quarantine. The professors also note with concern the increasing frequency of people sowing ethnic disharmony through social media and have requested TV stations to report situations with respect. They say, quote, stigma and the trend to blame certain groups could push the epidemic underground with devastating consequences for all, unquote. Now the Presidential Task Force to Combat COVID-19 held a meeting today. These were the views expressed by Dr. Prasad Kolumbage, Executive Committee Member of the Government Medical Officers Association. Other than COVID-19, Janan Pudhikar Sadhika Balakaya, Rasimha Pavatuna.
Many decisions were taken on the sensitive issues faced by the people at today's meeting of the Presidential Task Force to combat COVID-19. As the GMOA, we stressed on continuing various tests and medical activities, and attention was drawn to this by the government and all other factions. Out of all, the attention was mainly focused on the implementation of the aggressive test and the test, test, test methods introduced by the World Health Organization. It was also pointed out the process of detecting patients and the spread of the virus cannot be controlled swiftly due to the delay in implementing these methods. Another decision was taken today that the people who are being quarantined must undergo all the mentioned tests and must be cleared before they are able to return to their homes. <laughs> Now, these were the views expressed by the Government Medical Officers Forum during a media briefing in Colombo today. We are a community which has overcome several epidemics. However, it is a country like that which is now experiencing some shortcomings. Earlier, there were specialist doctors to advise the President and the Minister of Health in situations such as this. However, it is sad to note that this problem has been dragged on for more than two months. Take a look at the presidential task force and decide whether it is the appropriate people who are in it. There are people from trade unions in that. This matter does not concern trade unions. We have no right to advise the government on COVID-19. That is because we do not have doctors who are specialized in that. It is a group of trade unionists who are there. Can COVID-19 be eliminated from the country if a trade union advises the president or the government? The government was fooled on this occasion. They assumed that the trade unionists around them were medical experts. They are ordinary doctors. The brokers of trade unions also became part of the process. There were people such as Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikram at the IDH, epidemiologist Dr. Lakkumar Fernando, the Director General of Health and the epidemiology specialist Dr. Pabba Paliyavadana and Dr. Sudat Samaravira. The Government Medical Officers Association had used the remarks and reports prepared by these individuals for two months and had deceived the President. Just imagine what will happen to the country's economy. What has happened to the domestic economy? There is a difficulty in selling vegetables. Economic centres, including the one in Dambulla, have been closed. The banking system is not functioning properly. The banking system is not functioning properly. I do not oppose the lockdown system. What are we trying to achieve and how should the lockdown be imposed? For example, residents of some countries on lockdown are not allowed to leave their homes. However, some shops are kept open. People go out and purchase goods. There is some movement, but it is controlled. Now, the Presidential Task Force on Essential Services, led by former Minister Basil Rajapaksha, met with European Union envoys today. The ambassadors representing the member countries of the EU had commended the collaborative efforts of the government and other institutions to safely repatriate tourists back to their home countries. A statement issued by the Prime Minister's office said the ambassadors commended the nationwide program currently in place to curb the spread of COVID-19. Discussions mainly focused on matters relating to the future of the health sector and the wider economy. The announcement added that ambassadors of Germany, Netherlands, France, Italy, Romania, Switzerland, Norway and the head of the EU delegation to Sri Lanka were among those who participated in the discussion. Now, the total number of COVID-19 cases reported here in Sri Lanka rose to 189 today with three new patients being diagnosed. Director General of Health Services, Specialist Dr. Anil Jasing has said the three new cases reported today were people who had maintained close contact with a patient from Ratnapura who had previously contracted COVID-19. The Ministry of Health said 140 patients are currently receiving treatment at several hospitals in the country. 228 persons are under observation. 42 persons have recovered from the disease. The isolation imposed on several localities remains in effect. Our correspondents noted distribution of essential items in those areas are being carried out in accordance with safety precautions. The areas of Telmugahavatta in Akurana, Atulugama in Kalutara, 
Kadumayan Kulam in Putlam and Thawadi in Jaffna have been placed under isolation. Five Gramaniladari divisions, including Attidia South, Sri Janamavata in Ratmalana and Pannila in Beruala, have been placed under isolation after coronavirus patients were found from these areas. Atalugama in Bandaragama has been classified as an isolated village. The Sri Lanka Navy, together with the police, have beefed up security around the Kepu Alla, which flows beside the village. All the essential items are being provided to a special operations centre that has been established in the area. I am reporting from the Pathadumbara Kandaliyad village which is situated in close proximity to Telbugavat Akuruna. The villagers living in the vicinity have been posed with a serious risk. However, we made an inquiry from the assistant medical officer of Pathadumbara, Indunil Pereira, in this regard. There are certain people we have identified. We have placed them under self-isolation in their homes and are monitoring them. Three people tested positive for the virus today. We were able to identify them as a result of our decision to scale up testing. Yesterday, we declared open the Irnavela Hospital. Accordingly, a dedicated hospital has been set up in the Kalambo, Kalutara, Gampaha and Putlam districts in the Beruwala, Homagama and Irnavela and Minwangoda areas. These hospitals will be tasked with treating suspected COVID-19 patients. The number of curfew violators arrested during the last 24 hours was the highest in any day since the curfew was imposed in the country. Around 1,800 suspects had been arrested, thereby bringing the total number of arrested suspects to approximately 18,000. In addition, at least 5,000 vehicles too had been seized. We have decided to strengthen the legal action that is being carried out against curfew violators. Yesterday, the CID arrested a person from the Kalanimulla area in Angura. This person had posted a video on social media calling on authorities to keep meditation centres open by stating that he is engaging in meditation to find a cure for COVID-19. This video has been taken by disregarding police and health officers who had gone to arrest the suspect. Another person had posted content on social media stating that COVID-19 patients are at the Paul Gahavella Hospital. He had created fear among the other patients at the hospital. That social media user was arrested last night. Nine people have been arrested for posting videos on social media which ridicule the quarantine process and sought to obstruct it. Now, microbiologist Dr. Kushlani Jayatilaka expressed the following views with regard to COVID-19. A cure should be found for a new virus. That is not an easy task. We can only make assumptions on the effectiveness of certain medicines. No proven medicine has been found so far to cure a person from the virus. There are certain medicines which are still being tested in certain countries. However, there is no medicine which can be prescribed as a cure for the virus. Nowadays, medicines are being tested on humans. The results of those tests have not been received yet. Therefore, we should learn to prevent contracting the virus, especially in public places. Nowadays, goods are sold in lorries. If an affected person had coughed onto the lorry and if he come into contact with that surface, there is a risk that we can contract the disease. The virus with which we are dealing with can remain on some surfaces for several days. That is why we are urging the people to wash their hands as much as possible. A person wearing a mask can still contract the virus if another person beside him coughs. Therefore, remember that wearing the mask does not guarantee protection from the virus. You should maintain a distance and wash your hands more often. <laughs> Now joining us on our Newsline program, WHO representative to Sri Lanka, Dr. Razia Pense, expressed the following views. WHO's advice to countries who are recommending masks for public use in community settings is please preserve the medical surgical masks for the healthcare workers. Healthcare workers need masks all the time because they are dealing with sick patients. Even when you are using a mask, masks by themselves do not protect you fully. When you wear a mask, you still continue to do the hand hygiene, you continue to have your respiratory etiquette, and you continue to do your social distancing. 
most of the time when people use masks they compensate other protective measures which are more important mm -hmm. because you have the false sense of security i'm wearing a mask i won't get i won't get it mask is for the protection of others not for yourself now the coroners association of sri lanka convened a media briefing earlier today අපි මෙම මරණ සඳහා යොමු වෙන්නේ ශ්‍රී ලංකා පුරා ඉන්න සිනා හදිසිමාන පරිසරවරු කිසිම නිශ්චිත we are doing the post mortems without even considering our physical health there are close to 600 coroners in the country who carry out more than 500 post mortems a day so i request that either the authorities from the respective ministries or any donors come forward to provide us with some protective clothing the public health inspectors have made a post mortem compulsory for all corona related deaths with regard to the coroners during post mortems If we are to do this over a long period we may have to take a decision to stop engaging in this duty as we have to think about our safety. වැඩ කරදු කිරීමට මක් නිසාද අපි අපේ ආරක්ෂාව පිළිබඳව අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම සැලකිලි සැලකිලිමත් විය යුතු තත්ත්වයක් මේ රටේ පවතින නිසා. ඒ වාර්තාවෙන් අපි කියන්නේ මේ What we do with this report is reaffirm if the disease dies because of infection from the corona virus or some other reason. We request that a PHI report is submitted before proceeding to the post mortem. Artavak samaga apata yomu karana lisa api illa sitna. Now farmers who cultivated vegetables have been badly affected as a result of the decision to close down economic centers. Farmers in the Melsuripura, Kumbugate, Bambaragalayaya, Madahapola, Rabe Potuvilla and the Tolabu El areas in the Kurunegala districts have been severely inconvenienced at present for these farmers any hope of being able to sell their produce has been shattered although farmers have obtained larger yields in comparison to previous years they have been unable to sell their produce this situation has forced farmers to abandon their fields farmers are instead serving up their produce in the jungle for elephants and other animals Farmers complain that turnips, beetroot, radish, tomatoes and watermelons are being given as food for animals as they cannot be sold for a single rupee. It will be helpful if there is a place for us to sell our produce. I have 6000 kilos of beetroot, 10000 kilos of capsicum and 4500 kilos of turnip. However, I have given up hopes of selling these as they do not fetch a good price. I was about to harvest these turnips. but i was informed not to bring my harvest as the market is closed after a few days i will have to discard the produce i mean anything could only now while farmers have abandoned their produce in some areas in other parts of the country the entire communities are going hungry as a result of being unable to work this is the elagamo area in kakirawa most people in the village are living through manual labor However, they cannot go to work owing to the current situation in the country. The people of this area have been badly affected due to the lack of food and water. We do not have a single cent. We have some rice which was cooked in the morning, but we do not have spices or condiments. The sum of the allowance given to us is only 1000 rupees. Both of us should go to bring it. Therefore it will cost us 100 rupees to travel. Only 900 rupees will remain. We do not ask the government for additional relief. Please give us what we had been receiving until the outbreak. We need to know why we are not getting that. We are eligible for the 5000 rupee grant. I need to know why we are not getting it. Laborers do not have work these days. We do not ask for relief constantly. So far we haven't asked for relief from anyone. Therefore please give us some relief now. We have not had work for about 20 days. How can we survive if the Gram and Ilidari has not visited us? A state official or a public representative has also failed to visit us. Now the chief incumbent of the Mihintalaya Rajamaha Viharaya the venerable Vallava Hengunuvave Damma Ratna Thero expressed the following views during a media briefing earlier today. MPs and ministers never paid taxes they benefited from commissions and bribes they engaged in various illegal activities they even benefited by selling drugs they never engaged in any activity that would benefit the community 
not a single MP or minister is to be seen now. So I urge them to remain this way and allow the president to carry on his program without any hindrance. Though the 225 MPs are no longer in their seats, the tri forces and the police are carrying out their duties efficiently. Public funds are being saved as we no longer have to spend on maintaining the 225 MPs. There are no provincial councils either. All of these funds could be used to curb the spread of COVID-19 and protect ourselves from this deadly virus. Even the municipal councils have been dissolved. The food distribution process is being politicized. At times, food is not allowed to be distributed due to political preferences. It is then that the government faces challenges. Now, although the government has announced that loan installments will not be deducted from the salaries, teachers claim that the deduction had taken place in April. The deduction of loan installments from salaries had taken place in March and April as well. It is the Education Cooperative Society which had made the deductions. The situation in the country surrounding COVID-19 has severely affected the public economically. Therefore, I request the government to inquire into this and refund the amounts which had been deducted into the accounts of these teachers. The salaries of teachers have been deducted after they were drafted into the staff service. Principals do not enjoy any privileges of the staff service. If salaries are being deducted without providing them with the privileges, an investigation must be carried out as per the decisions of the Presidential Task Force on Education. Now they are saying that a request must be made to suspend the deduction from salaries. They are only saying this now. It is unfair if our festival allowances are slashed and our salaries are also deducted. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Joint Teachers Service Union has requested Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa in writing to suspend deductions of teachers' salaries. On the 26th of March, the Cabinet spokesman announced that deducting loan installments from salaries will be halted from April. We cannot implement this from March. However, deductions will not be made from salaries in April and May. We are managing this situation in the backdrop of an ongoing financial crisis. They made the deductions in March. At that time, they said that they could not suspend the deductions as the accounts have been finalized. However, we are now being informed that they have deducted the installments in April as well. Public servants have been severely inconvenienced as a result of this situation. The government has willfully deceived these public servants. They should show some compassion towards them. In India, ministers have undertaken a pay cut. However, our ministers are enjoying all the privileges and have cheated the public servants in a disgraceful manner. This is not a problem concerning a circular. We request the government to rectify this situation. Do not inconvenience public servants in this way. The Education Minister informed the Cabinet regarding this today. The President then instructed to suspend the deductions for the next two months. It is the Education Cooperative Society which has offered these loans. The government had made a decision to avoid deducting salaries in April and May. Minister Dallas Salaha Peruma raised this matter during today's cabinet meeting. A solution will be provided in the near future. Now, in one of our main stories this evening, several issues have arisen due to the decision which was taken to suspend operations at the dedicated economic centre situated across the country. An announcement was made yesterday stating that operations at the dedicated economic centres in Tambuttegama, Kappatipola, Nuorelia and Ambilipitia will be suspended from yesterday based on a directive of the Presidential Task Force. In light of this decision, the Presidential Task Force had introduced a mechanism last evening where vegetables and fruits would be distributed to wholesalers in relevant areas with the intervention of divisional secretaries. However, many traders and farmers had arrived at towns including Naula, Galevela, Habarana and Kakirava last night with the intention of trading at the Dambulla Economic Centre this morning. Although the police did not allow the traders and farmers to carry out their activities at the time, by this morning a large crowd had gathered in the Dambulla town. Since the Economic Centre was inoperational, vendors sold their produce on the roadside. Now, 
ලාබට තියෙනවා අපි අඩු ගන්න ඒක ආවේ ඊයේ කැඩුවේ අපිට ගෙනියන්න තරම් නැහැ ඒ පාර අද මෙතෙන් මේ ගෙනාවි ගවුන් එකේ කියන වාරසියක් ඔව් ඒක අටිය මොනවා කියලා දන්නේ නැහැ අයියා මේ මේ මිනිසුන් එක්ක එක්තරා අසාධාරණ කරන්න ඕනේ ගවියන් කියනානේ ඊයේ රෑ ඉඳන් බලු ගැනලා අපි මගේ හිටියේ දැන් තමයි මේ මේ ඔයුවේ කිරා ගන්න තරම් නැහැ Our correspondent said trading had taken place until this evening. Former provincial councillor Pramita Bandar Tennakon had intervened to resolve the issue while the national organizer of the All Ceylon Farmers Federation Namal Karna Ratna had also arrived at the Dambulla Economic Center. 30,000 kilos worth of orders had been received. It will take a day or two for this to settle. We cannot solve all the issues at once. Minister Basil is ready to open this taking into account the plight of the farmers. However, health directives will have to be followed. So please be understanding and remain patient for a few more days. Trains do not operate at present. Every train station has a scale. If all trains are utilized, they could carry goods worth 50 to 60 lorries at the fraction of a cost a method to exchange goods between stations can also be established there are government vehicles those can be utilized too the government should not turn this into a business it should consider this a service and provide farmers with a reasonable price for their produce and also offer the goods to consumers at a fair price we are ready to extend our support ee sandaha api udaw karanna sudanam pare velandama meka gas trading on the road is a scam A kilo of tomatoes is priced at 20 rupees while cabbage is below 40 rupees. They are robbing the farmers. We have found solutions for this. Within 2 days we will ensure farmers are able to sell their produce to the entire country at a reasonable price. Avasthava sasala denawa me davasth deka athulata. Ape anawum vyapar Our orders will be received through businessmen. I would like to request farmers to follow those orders. Kanna kadithu karanna kela man gonge karnuka illa idna. The Tambutte Gama dedicated economic center however remained operational today the quantity of vegetables which was brought to the economic center by farmers had increased as well Adha dina pamana The Traders Association will only operate the economic center today. After today we will not open the economic center until the government notifies us to do so. We promised farmers it will not be closed. However, based on the government's request, we will close the center from tomorrow. A special operations center has been established at the Tambuttegama dedicated economic center to carry out the mechanism introduced by the government. The Manik Kumbhara Economic Center had also been closed by this morning. Municipal Commissioner of Kandy Chandana Tennakon had granted permission for six selected shops to operate today. Anadurdayaka satiya kiyala. The media and medical professionals warn that this is the riskiest week. We are not robots. It is not as if we won't contract the virus. We took this step to protect ourselves. Even the government has advised us to do so. Does the commissioner have the right to take decisions going against the advice of the government? The commissioner has tried to serve a particular group of people for his personal gain. Chandana Tennakon Komasar Istuma Bharagata idu. E adahas month I refute these claims. They can make decisions as a trading association. Closing down the economic center can be done if everyone is in favor of it. However, as a state institution, we are committed to implement our decisions. Thus, according to the decisions made, we have kept the gates open. Not opening the shops is up to them. Api meke gate to yurta karla thi na velanda sell yurta kiri ma no kiri ma e vyaapari ke prajaoge vaga kiri ma. Now the Sri Lanka rupee slid further and depreciated to rupees 200.46 against the US dollar. According to the central bank data, the rupee recorded a selling rate of rupees 192.65 against the US dollar on the 1st of April and has declined sharply since against the backdrop of the current COVID-19 pandemic. Now moving on, President Donald Trump blamed the World Health Organization for getting quote every aspect of the coronavirus pandemic wrong. and threatened to withhold funding from the international organization the uh, who that's the world health organization receives vast amounts of money from the united states we pay for a majority or biggest portion of their money and they uh, actually criticized and disagreed with my travel ban at the time i did it and they were wrong they've been wrong about a lot of things and they had a lot of information early and they didn't want to do very 
They seem to be very China-centric. And uh, we have to look into that. So we're going to look into it. We pay for We give a majority of the money that they get. They called it wrong. They call it wrong. They really — they missed the call. They could have called it months earlier. They would have known. They should have known. And they probably did know. So we'll be looking into that very carefully. And we're going to put a hold on money spent to the WHO. We're going to put a very powerful hold on it. And we're going to see. It's a great thing if it works. But when they call every shot wrong, that's no good. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the news. Now, the chairman of the National Election Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, says the process of distributing relief during the COVID-19 outbreak must be what he called depoliticized and politicians should not interfere with the choosing of the beneficiaries. The chairman of the National Elections Commission on his Facebook account said, quote, a small group of people might be aiming to win votes by providing relief. However, we believe that a civilized and a good politician will not do that, unquote. The poll's chief responded to criticism leveled against him for discouraging candidates, carrying out relief activities which could give them an upper hand at the general election. Desha Priya said that generally neither he nor the National Election Commission would respond to politicians' comments, but this time it warranted him to clarify the position of the NEC. He clarified that the NEC had not implied that politicians should stay out of relief activities, but instead stressed that candidates and political parties should not be promoted through such programs. The Facebook post read, quote, If politicians need to provide relief to the country, the best method would be to grant such relief through the state apparatus. It is better if videos and pictures of such activities are not captured, unquote. Now, Fitch Ratings said that the extraordinary regulatory measures announced by the central bank should relieve immediate pressure on the bank's financial profiles but will not prevent medium-term deterioration. Fitch, which recently revised the banking sector outlook for Sri Lanka to negative from stable to reflect these risks and will be assessing rather the impact on the bank's ratings. In addition, Fitch believes the loosening of non-performing loan requirements would help to suppress the sharp and near-term increase in NPLs. Fitch also emphasized that apart from the reduction in the statutory reserve ratio, the regulator is yet to introduce measures to support the liquidity position of banks and believes that there could be further relaxation, particularly on the liquidity coverage ratio. Fitch said that despite such measures, the risks to the banking sector have increased, with the weaker operating environment exerting pressure on the bank's loan quality and profitability. Fitch expects weaker profitability to also weigh on capitalization over the next 12 months. Now, wild elephants are encroaching on several villagers in the Minipay Administrative Division. Oh, 
Herds of wild elephants have begun encroaching on villagers including Lunumada Lakatia, Diabubula, Veeragantota and Oruvalayaya in Morayaya Minipay. Footage of the herd marching through a village was captured on a mobile phone. Hey, hey, pahai, hey. Hai, 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 hatai, hatai, hatai. The herd had tried to attack a person in Oruvalayaya at about 10 p.m. last night. Villagers say the herds come from the eastern slopes of the central hills and that they have claimed the lives of many residents in the past. Up next is Around the Country in 99 Seconds. Two multi-day fishing trawlers were damaged by a fire at the Gulf Fisheries Harbour. Our correspondent stated that the fire broke out in a vessel which was being repaired at the Gaul Fisheries Harbour. Officers of the Gaul Navy Fire Brigade and the Fire Brigade of the Gaul Municipal Council took steps to douse the fire. The cause of the fire is yet to be ascertained. More than 20 acres of forest in the Pabrugas Hinna forest area belonging to the Gomarang Kadavala Divisional Secretariat in Tringamali have been destroyed. Two suspects have been arrested this morning and police are conducting search operations to locate more suspects. The arrested suspects are residents of Kuchaveli and they were remanded until the 20th after being produced to the additional magistrate of Trincomalee. An unidentified corpse was discovered along the Midigama beach in Valigama this morning. It was found by a group of officers at a nearby police post. Accordingly, they arrived at the scene after observing the body and informing the public health inspectors. The body has been taken to the Matra hospital for further investigations. Police raids were carried out yesterday in the Ranhavadigama area in Uva Parnagama. The police seized 300 bottles of illicit liquor and arrested two suspects who are residents of the same area. The suspects are to be produced before the Valimada Magistrates Court. Now the new coronavirus outbreak has spread rapidly around the world. With the decision made by China to lift the lockdown in Wuhan, the epicenter of COVID-19 at the start, what is the situation in other parts of the world? Let's find out. As of 6 p.m. today, total number of COVID-19 patients globally stands at 1,447,471. Total number of deaths stand at 83,401 and total number recovered stands at 309,145. The top four countries include the United States of America. With a population of 327.2 million, their cases stand at 400,549 with 12,857 deaths. Total recovered stands at 21,711. Spain, with a population of 46.75 million, have a total number of 146,690 cases with 14,555 deaths. Total recovery stands at 48,021. Italy, with a population of 60.5 million, have a total of 135,586 cases with 17,127 dead. The total recovery stands at 24,392. France moved up to fourth place today. Their population stands at 65.3 million with 109,069 cases and 10,328 dead. Total recovery stands at 19,337. Other countries with the highest number of COVID-19 cases are Germany, China, Iran, the United Kingdom, Turkey and Switzerland. This is not the first time an international health crisis occurred due to the spread of a novel coronavirus or other animal-originated viruses such as the influenza that created the swine flu, bird flu and seasonal flu epidemics in recent history. Here is a comparison done by Al Jazeera of the information and data they have on COVID-19 with recent similar coronavirus-related diseases. The U.S. recorded the most coronavirus deaths in a single day with more than 1,800 fatalities reported yesterday. 
However, during a press conference, President Donald Trump said the U.S. might be getting to the top of the curve. France officially registered more than 10,000 deaths from the coronavirus infections yesterday, becoming the fourth country to go beyond that threshold after Italy, Spain and the United States. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has spent his second night in the intensive care unit in hospital. The Prime Minister was reported to be in stable condition today after receiving oxygen support for COVID-19 complications while his foreign minister directs the battle against the outbreak. Mauro Ferrari, the head of the European Research Council and the EU's top scientist, has resigned, citing Brussels' disappointing response to the pandemic. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe declared a month-long state of emergency in major population centres, including Tokyo, where the number of cases has more than doubled this week to 1,116. Australia's parliament is set to meet to pass an 80 billion Australian dollar wage support package designed to accommodate about half of Australia's usual workforce. Now, if you have access to the news, be it in print or digital media, you've probably been opened up to fake news, be it chain messages that are shared on WhatsApp uh, by your grandparents or even messages that are sent to you by people who are your contemporaries. This has been a real problem. In fighting a pandemic, one that is of global proportions, it is vital that the right information is communicated to the people that need it most. It is with this in mind that News First, as an organization committed to ensuring the safety of the people, have been doing a special segment called Mythbusters to bust those myths that do make their way around society. Let's take a look at today's segment. A video clip is currently making its rounds across many social media platforms claiming to be of authorities of an undisclosed country throwing the bodies of COVID-19 victims into the sea. However, News First found it is from the Libyan coast where bodies were washed ashore from a shipwreck in 2014. The disturbing video showing the bodies of the migrants washed ashore after a boat capsized near the Libyan coast in 2014 is being falsely linked to the deaths caused by the novel coronavirus. To date, there has been no information nor evidence to suggest that the new coronavirus could be transmitted by mosquitoes. The new coronavirus is a respiratory virus which spreads primarily through droplets generated when an infected person coughs or sneezes or through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose of an infected person. There is a rumour that hand dryers are an effective method to kill the coronavirus. However, the World Health Organization said hand dryers are not effective in killing the coronavirus. To protect yourself against the new coronavirus, you should frequently clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Once your hands are cleaned, you should dry them thoroughly by using paper towels or a warm air dryer. That was our Mythbusters segment. Stay tuned to News First for more uh, busting of myths and also uh, join our website www.newsfirst.lk to clarify any rumours that you may be hearing. Now taking a look back at your local news, now the locals living on the coastal area in Kalido, Kalutara have been severely inconvenienced due to marine water flooding nearly 60 houses in the vicinity. This was the situation in the Kalido beach in Kalutara this morning. Officers of the Kalthura Divisional Secretariat said approximately 60 houses and several tourist hotels were inundated due to seawater flooding the area. Our correspondents said wells and toilets were inundated as well. Among the many places affected by the prevailing situation was the magistrate's official residence within the vicinity. Now a few minutes ago, you saw the response we got for our Nagitimu Sri Lanka song a compilation of video clips we received from our own loyal viewers. Now, what made us launch this song? Here's our story. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected all aspects of day-to-day -day lives in hitherto unexpected ways. Some of these changes have been drastic and have had a jarring effect on public psyche. People in Sri Lanka are in the midst of an unexpected and prolonged mandatory holiday. Now, News First decided to give meaning to this holiday by tapping into the limitless potential of our own people.
We launched the Gum at the Rise Up Sri Lanka concept just over a week ago, hoping to give Sri Lankans young and old an opportunity to express themselves by being creative. And the response was overwhelming. The drawings and paintings we received flooded in by their thousands and continues even today. We did all we could to be the platform for this outpouring of creativity and then a few days ago launched the Nagitimu Sri Lanka theme song. But this launch was different. We invited Sri Lankans across our nation to lend us their voices. And the result has been nothing short of spectacular. A cursory search for Nagitimu Sri Lanka on YouTube will result in hundreds of videos uploaded by the youth of this nation, united in their vision for a strong comeback from this challenge. Tamil-speaking youth from Jaffna sang in Singhala. Young people who spoke Singhala sang Tamil. This creativity has now spilt over to other platforms, including TikTok and, of course, Facebook. Gum at the Nagitimu Sri Lanka is today a movement of unity, oneness and solidarity. A clear message from the young people of this country to say, we are one, we are together and we will rise up. Now as I said earlier, you've probably been subject to a chain message at some point in time. Now, in good news, WhatsApp is trying to stem the rapid spread of coronavirus misinformation by placing new limits on the number of times a forwarded message can be shared simultaneously. Now, a message received by a person on Facebook that has already been forwarded five times can now only be passed on to one chat at a time. The new limits are WhatsApp's strictest yet. Now, the chat app has been gradually tightening the restrictions on its forwarding function, where a user can easily choose multiple groups or people to receive a particular message. Now, two years ago, a user could pass on a forwarded message to 250 groups at once, with each group capable of hosting hundreds of users. By last year, the company had reduced that limit to five groups at a time. Now, it's one, although a user could theoretically still forward the same message to individuals or groups one by one. Well, that's a wrap of your primetime news for today. It's been a pleasure having you. I've been Deshan Gonavala for the News First Team and until we come back again tomorrow with the very latest, take care and God bless.